Today's top picks from Reuters Breaking Views. Why the EU rebate needs a rethink and Market Limbo gets another extension. With me now to discuss these stories is Reuters Breaking Views assistant editor Chris Hughes. Chris, um, your piece today on the EU budget says um, agreement may not be reached, it may, the negotiations, negotiations may extend, and they're drifting towards compromise, but surely that's what talks are all about. What's wrong with compromise? Well, what's wrong with compromise here is that there does actually need to be a serious debate in Europe about how um, it, uh, it raises uh, its, 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 uh, the, the European Commission's funding and how it's spent. And instead, we're just going to have another uh, series of, of meetings. I think they're calling it a, a, a four-shirt meeting where, where it's going to basically um, drag on a bit, you know, go into the suitcase, get another shirt for that extra day, and probably just drift towards a little bit of tinkering here and there about... Um, the next um, uh, seven-year budget. But in reality, there does need to be a proper debate about um, uh, not just the overall uh, size of the EU's budget and how much it's spending, um, but also on the relative contributions of, e of each country. You know, there are well, nobody, big questions. No, nobody wants to pay more than they currently are. No, of exactly. But nobody wants to pay that's more. That's where the compromise comes but, in. But in. But in some cases, you know, you can say, you can say that that. The, 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 the current kind of contribution matrix, which kind of, you know, is, is getting a bit long in the tooth now. Uh, different economies are now at different sizes, moving at different speeds. Um, the rate at which different economies are, are paying in um, is kind of set in yesteryear. And, and, and there is a case for starting from scratch and going, look, is it right that this is Germany's contribution, this is UK's contribution? The trouble is, of course, I mean, while there may be a kind of, you know, good reasons in principle to reassess what each country contributes. It's politically dynamite because, as you say, you know, the poor, you know there are some countries that are going to, you know, on a first principles basis, look like they ought to pay more. And nobody wants to have that kind of row. But you, you mentioned the UK and, uh, you know, going back to maybe redrawing the whole um, mm. the way uh, contributions are paid. Interesting in the UK, um, the UK has its rebate. Uh, from Mrs Thatcher in 1984. That's when agricultural spending was about 80% of the EU budget. Now it's about 40. So surely the UK argument that it must keep the rebate and, you know, threatening to veto, that's uh, on a false premise, isn't it? Well, as you say, I mean, the, if, you, if you look at this on first principles basis and you look at the relative sizes of, of economies, I mean, clearly the UK is a lot bigger than it was back then. Uh, you know, from a, from, a, from, a, from a sort of brutally mathematical point of view, you can make a case that the UK um, ought to pay more and that the, the rebate, you know, from a purely economic basis, is it really justified? You know, it's open to question. The trouble is that this is, this is not really about economics per se, it's about politics. And those kind of debates are not going to be had. OK, moving on to the markets. Um, data today showing that the uh, Chinese economy is starting to recover. We know the US is slowly recovering. Germany, though, and Europe may be the weak link. But um, as so the world economy firing on two out of three engines. But as somebody once said, two out of three ain't bad, is it? Two out of three ain't bad. It'll keep it. it kind of it'll keep the markets in this sort of holding pattern that we've that we've seen where they're torn two ways. So you have you know, you do have the 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 benefit, albeit perhaps, you know, limited of um, this continuing money printing. I mean, even though the Fed is on kind of QE infinity, um, it can only do so much to, to prop markets up. Uh, you do have the support of um, this, albeit expected, pickup in, uh, in, in Chinese uh, uh, manufacturing uh, in, in the, the Chinese manufacturing index, um, we also have some good data overnight from uh, from the US. But then you have this drag from Europe. So we've had some pretty disappointing data from Europe today. I mean, Europe isn't, you know, it's as we noted, you know, uh, the other week. You know, it could have been a lot worse in Europe given the deleveraging that's going on. But it's still, you know, it's still a laggard in the world economy. So you don't, you only have two out of three engines, as we say. And that just means that markets are sort of going to continue to be trapped in this sort of tense position where they can't quite break out and, and there's no real rally there. But equally, you know, there is a, there's clearly some insurance, you know, mm -hmm. stopping them go back into the mine. I think this, is just going to, this pattern is going to be sustained until you see some kind of 
progress on the other big issue, the, the, the fiscal cliff in the US, you know, or you see the Eurozone really start to pick up more convincingly. So Europe uh, laggard, not a uh, laggard. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, you I could. had to get that one in. You said it. <laughs> Chris, thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, Reuters Breaking Views. Chris Hughes, well, for more agenda-setting financial insight, watch our US Breaking Views show every day, 12.30 Eastern, 17.30 GMT. I'm Jamie McGeever. This is Reuters.